Ceramic arrives in Wellington, bringing to New Zealand the first British rugby team to tour this country since 1930. During its three-month stay, the team will play 23 matches, including four tests, one in each of the main centres, and will later tour Australia. This, the fifth British team to tour New Zealand, is composed entirely of players of international experience. Of its 30 members, three come from England, five from Scotland, nine from Ireland, and 13 from Wales. In an informal welcome to the team, Mr. Belcher, chairman of the New Zealand Rugby Union, says, And I hope that when the time comes to say goodbye in three months' time, that you will be able to look back on this tour of New Zealand with the most pleasant and happy memories. I wish you all the best of luck on your tour, and I hope that it will prove most enjoyable. The team manager, Surgeon Captain Osborne, replies, um, All the boys are well and uh, in good heart, and we've come here uh, to play good open football, uh, as you do, and we remember that it was in this tradition that uh, that great team of Dave Gallagher's uh, uh, started this uh, play. And so uh, I'm uh, going to ask Captain Mullen, uh, ask Carl, Dr. Carl Mullen, our captain, uh, to continue with a few remarks now. But we're all jolly glad to be here. Well, uh, on behalf of the team, uh, I would just like to say we had a very, very pleasant crossing. We're all feeling very well, and we're looking forward very much to our games. I was one of the lucky ones who played against the Kiwis when they were over in the British Isles on their last occasion. And I do hope that we go down as well here in New Zealand. That's where I'm seeing it down in Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. The Canterbury Museum in Christchurch, which performs a constant service for schools and public, is to be extended as part of Canterbury's centennial activities. In the last century, this museum achieved world fame under Sir Julius von Haast for its collection of moa skeletons, then newly discovered. Until 1939, the only evidence that man and moa had ever seen each other was a South Island cave painting. Then came the discovery of the graves of moa hunters at the Wairau Bar, the museum has a reconstruction of one of these burials. At the foot of the corpse, these ancient Polynesians had placed a blown moa's egg, probably containing drinking water for the next world. The broken moa bones near the egg are no doubt remains of pieces of moa meat. The moa hunter's stone implements were also buried with him. At the head were several necklaces, all made from beads of moa bone. This burial of six or seven hundred years ago was of a young man. Some of the moa bone necklaces were made in imitation of shark's teeth. The material is interestingly displayed. Here, for example, is how to make a moa hunter fish hook. Take and shape a tab of moa bone, drill out the inner curve and remove the center. Then shape and polish. All demonstrated in the museum with exhibits from the Isles collection from the Wairau Bar. The 12 pound horned ads of New Zealand argillite is an informative relic from a moa hunter grave. It is here compared with a similar ancient ads from Bora Bora in the Tahiti group near the accepted jumping off place of the Maori migrations. The horned adzes link the men who roamed the Wairau before the Maa shortage with the older centers of Polynesian culture. In the far north lies Cape Maria Van Diemen, discovered and named by Tasman in 1642. At nearby Cape Reinga, according to ancient belief, the Maori spirits leapt into eternity. These are familiar landmarks to the people who tend New Zealand's most northerly lighthouse at Cape Reinga Station. The lighthouse crew are always on the job. Keeping the lenses clean is an important part of their daily routine. Mechanism of the bulb renewal system is also checked, so that one bulb automatically takes over when the other burns out. Below, the maintenance crew overhaul the diesel engines and the generator. There's always one engine ready for an emergency. The lamp flashes for 26 seconds and is visible in clear weather for 30 miles. Welcome sign for ships and aircraft. A radio beacon provides an additional check on position, 
while each day a weather report is phoned through to the meteorological office in Auckland. Home life is comfortable in these well-glassed-in houses. The station supervisor contacts the outside world with his own transmitter while tea is being prepared. Near another home, Junior feeds his only playmates. In this lonely spot, company of any kind is scarce, but the calm, ordered existence brings a peace of mind city dwellers do not know. As the shadows gather over the ocean, another day ends at Cape Reinga.